today we're doing Ben Nevis. We love Ben Nevis here at Different Spirits HQ. Brewer's yeast, very cool. Long fermentation times, awesome. Although I'm, I'm not actually sure uh, how much of that they still do, but we have a great little lineup of um, youngish, independently bottled Ben Nevis here. Courtesy of my friend Joe. Joe's been waiting for a long time for me to review these. Thank you for your patience, Joe. Um, Joe was kind enough to stop by and meet me personally in Chicago to hand me these things. All right, so we have got three eight, nine-year-old Ben Nevises to head to head. And I figured it might be fun to have a little something to put against them. So I'm also going to taste out Nika from the Barrel. Um, a blended whiskey. It's nominally a Japanese whiskey, but it's pretty well known that a lot of Ben Nevis goes into this stuff. By the way, this is my, I'm not like a giant or anything. This is a 50 centiliter bottle, or five centiliter bottle, I'm sorry. Um, so we're gonna get this poured. And without further ado, Let's get started. Okay. All right, starting with the uh, the Nika. <sighs> Recent bottling, this is pretty dang strong. Yeah, 51.4% alcohol by volume. Double matured, again, it's a blended whiskey, so there's some grain going into this. Sort of, it's a tricky one to try to get uh, a handle on what's happening. My initial impression is sort of um, like a very kind of nutty latte that someone has just kind of maybe added a shot of, say, Ardbeg into. It's very coffee driven, very kind of nutty. Maybe there's some like nutshelly things going on. But yeah, there's a little little bit of peat and kind of s'mores creeping through as well. And keep keep swirling this, give it some time, and you do get to start starting to get some some tropical notes, some orangey notes, some um, orange peel, tangerine. Some kind of grungy graininess, that's the Ben Nevis. So yeah, it's really smelling like like a dirty chocolate chocolate orange right now. Along with the kind of nutty, you know, latte thing. Not a lot, like a like a cappuccino. With that little hint of maybe maybe some maritime PD stuff in there too. But again, it's just, it's kind of, it's a hair bit vague. It's a hair bit um, tricky to get your bearings with. Um, on the palate, let me, let me hit this one again. Yeah, this is a this is a very very tricky whiskey. It's so it's not for for beginners, um, like not at all. It's fifty. It's pushing fifty two percent ABV. Um, it's uh, it's got some it's got up some a mix of flavors in there. Again, there's some kind of little hint of peatiness. There's that kind of grungy grainy thing, almost a yeah like like um, funky oatmeal or something, which is. You know, someone whose only experience is like Glenlivet, they're not going to be into that. But at the same time, so you know, if if I had tried this fifteen years ago, 
12 years ago, say, I would have been really impressed with this. I would have thought it was absolutely fantastic and amazing. Um, because it's, it's, it's got some weight to it. It's got some complexity. But I think com coming back to this, because I did try it a, a while ago, it's, uh, I'm starting to see the little hints of shortcomings. So if you're an intermediate and you've put your time in with cast strength whiskeys, you've tried your Highland Parks, you've tried your Isla stuff, you know, on and on and on. I think you will be very impressed with this. I'm less impressed with this because I'm, I'm coming to this with a critical eye. I'm thinking about, you know, how, mouth presence. I'm thinking about, like, um, the, the, uh, the trajectory, the finish, and... Yeah, it's, it's doing a very good job of giving me the, the impression that there's more there than there is there. Yeah. Um, very kind of like, uh, yeah, like s'mores up front, but the, it's like a, instead of a, uh, of a, uh, I'm forgetting the name of that cracker, the cookie. The instead of the regular graham cracker, thank you. Um, you're, you've got like a, a crazy, slightly funky oatmeal-y thing. That's that's kind of how this arrives. It's very funky s'more uh, with a lot of coffee, a lot of nuttiness. Um, you know, again, hints of orange, orangey stuff. Maybe a little bit more citrus in there, like uh, barley citrus. A lot of those notes carry through the finish, uh, through the, the mid palette into the finish. But you really have to pay attention to what's happening in the finish. Not just like the first second or so, but like like keep paying attention to what, what's going on in second like two and three, because then some of those grain notes start to, start to kind of peek through. It starts to get a little cardboardy. It still has a fair amount of mouth presence to it. I think that's just the, the string that's bottled at. Yeah, you really have to be paying attention. Because if, if you're just drinking this, you're like, oh, this is great. This is exactly what a classically built whiskey should be. But, and it, and it is. I mean, this is, this is good. Um... But I do have to have to point out that what's there is it's 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 going to be tricky tricking you a little bit if you don't if you're not really paying attention. Yeah, there is a little bit of ethanol in the finish. The mouth length is a little bit short. The finish is, is I mean the 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 structure on the finish is pretty grippy. I mean the like the, the woodiness, the tannins, but. Um, like a lot of the other stuff, the fruit in particular just falls away really quickly. Um, I'm going to pour myself some more of this. Again, I'm not saying it's bad. I mean, I'm, I'm torn on this. Because I'll take sips of it and I'll go, oh, this is, this is really, really good. And I'll take another sip of it and I'm like, ah, the finish is bothering me. The mouth feels bothering. The mouth length is bothering me. It's maybe a hair not not does isn't actually as complex as it initially appears. Hmm. Well, the uh, one way to tell if you're uh, trying to gauge the quality of a whiskey is just shoot some water into it and see how it reacts. And that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to add two squirts to this, and we shall come back. Uh, meanwhile, onto our uh, independent bottlings of Ben Nevis. First from Joe is a signatory bottling. This is from um, 2013, and it's an eight-year-old, so bottled, um, oh, 2020, what would it be? Like 2022, something like that. Uh, and this is cast number 427 and 429, two, two casts, bottled at 46%, unchill filtered, no color, all the usual stuff. Uh, and I believe it's a bur these are bourbon casks. Yeah, 
And there we go. That is Ben Nevis. It's an it. Can I monologue a little bit here? I mean, I know these these videos are all monologuing, but bear with me for a second. People get twisted about Ben Nevis because it tends to get lumped in with other Highlanders um, and other island whiskeys sometimes that have uh, just a very different structure to them. Kleinlish, um, Pulteney, Springbank got sometimes. Uh, um, uh, Oban, I mean, it's not that far from Oban, right? But it's just, it's a very, very different character, actually. So it doesn't, I mean, it's... In some ways, I think it you could, it's, it makes more sense for me, at least, to think of it as almost a sibling, like the grungier, darker sibling of Tomatin, which is uh, much, much further northeast. So this is, you know, the south southwest highlands. Uh, Tomatin would be is really just kind of what south of Inverness, um, but it's got that same kind of like intense fruitiness to it, and this is like. So think about the history of Ben Nevis. When this when it reopened after the war, which is like mid-50s, 55, I think, um, it was really intended as a kind of an in-house blended whiskey producer. They had their own column still. I've had some 21-year-old uh, do a Ben Nevis once. It was, it was lovely. Um, but this was really meant to kind of hold its own uh, as, a, as a single malt. Um, in that kind of single blend. And so it is a flavor malt, as the, as the blenders would say. This is not something just to fill it out and kind of push away the off notes from the grain. This is, um, this is meant to take the lead in a blend. But it's not a flavor malt like Isla stuff is, like really heavily sharing McCallan or something is. This is, this is really, really, really intensely fruity. And it's like a, a funky fruity. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, it's a, if you like the the funkier, grungier cousin of Tomatin. Orange, tangerine, peaches. Um, <clears throat> like applesauce that is starting to go a little bit bad, but in a good way. Um... Manuka honey, like funky honey. Uh, there's some beery notes to this. I mean, it's brewer's yeast, yeah, but but I'm also just like straight, some straight up beer, like amber ale. Very very fun. I mean, it's just like straight up in your face with the with the fruit. There's also little hints of minerality, although I've had much more minerally Ben Nevises than this. This is. Uh, really a little bit of oh i don't know like i, I want to say like like seaside gravel or something it's not really that maritime it's just but it's not not maritime either it's more like it's so that we're not on the beach we're on like the the gravel road driving up to the beach if that makes none of this makes sense i'm gonna i'm gonna move on it's a little bit minerally. But yeah, lots and lots of fruit, some honey. Um, there's a kind of Loire Valley Chenin Blanc kind of character to this. A little bit of, of um, Vouvray happening, which I'm into. Yeah, the peach is out of the world. Nectarine as well, lots of stone fruit. Um, yeah, so... Definitely a hugely characterful malt. Uh, ben Nevis is rarely going to let you be, you know, let you down on the nose. It's rarely boring on the palate. Oh, this is a banger. Um, Yeah, ripping. I mean, it really arrives, again, very, very fruity. Lots of orange, lots of stone fruit, 
peach nectarine. Um, little hints of like, oh, what is that? Kiwi, I think. That applesauce thing again. Um, but then as it goes into the mint palette, all that fruit just kind of like strips itself away and you're left with this kind of grungy, bitter, but good bitter, like cereal grainy character. Um, there's still a halo of like kind of uh, fruit eau de vie character, like um, just like mix, mix together all your fruit brandies, um, your schnapps. And that's kind of what's happening, along with a, some floral stuff happening as well. Um, and then that kind of just like funky grainy with a floral halo kind of bitterness kind of holds through in the finish. That's fun. For an eight-year-old whiskey, that's a really good development. It's not... I don't think these are particularly good casts. There's little hints of, you know, vanilla creeping through, but not, they're not doing a whole lot here. Like, this is the distillate um, really doing all the lifting here. Um, in terms of the form, uh, I mean, mouth presence is, for 46%, mouth presence is pretty good. Uh, the mouth length is a little bit short. It's really kind of stopping just past my molars. Um, but for an eight-year-old whiskey, I'm not, I'm not complaining about this. Um, this is also not super duper expensive um, on the at the uh, European retailers. So yeah, for the price, I would not complain about this. I mean, it's it's a young whiskey and it's a really distillate driven whiskey. But if you're looking for a distillate-driven whiskey that is not, you know, Isla and is not um, some crazy worm tubby thing. Um, this is worth investigating. This is really fun. All right, I'm going to give this some water. We'll come back to it. So it's 46%. One squirt should do it. And let's move on. All right, uh, we're just going to go up. So how I've arranged these is, is we're starting with a blend and then we're just going up by proof. And this is a nine-year-old Ben Nevis, distilled uh, 2012. Uh, and it's a, a Duncan Taylor cask. Uh, and I think Joe actually got the, slightly miswrote the number. It's 361719 is the cask number, 53.9%. Uh, apparently a Binnie's pick, but I'm, it looks like a couple of other retailers also might have, might have gotten a hold of this. All right, uh, let's see what we got on the nose. Actually much more subdued on the nose than the, um, than the signatory, which is not a huge surprise. Sometimes, you know, when you kick things up to cast strength, or at least keep them there, um, you can kind of, of mute the nose a little bit. It's more lemony this time than orangey. No, no, there's some orange peel there, but it's really like a lot of lemon peel, lemon pulp as well. Come on. Oh, oh, and there's the kind of funky oatmeal note, like... Um, yep, yeah, that, that kind of funky, if you smell new make, it's a little bit like that, but it's, there's, I don't know, there's more to it than that. Yeah, and it's new makey, but nice. This is another one where I, I'm guessing the cask is not doing very much. Um, and I'm not complaining because Naked Ben Nevis is delightful. There's that little little hint of minerality, like just a little hint of like roadside dust someone kicked up. Uh, that manuka honey thing. And again, that's some that thing that's kind of reminiscent of 
Loire Valley Chenin Blanc for me. Well, this this one is more like Sauvignon or something. It's a little bit more austere than Vouvray. Sorry, wine nerd stuff. But again, it's more muted. Yeah, it's more muted on the nose than the um, than the signatory was. On the palate, here we go. Oh, but it's not more muted on the on the palate. Holy cow! Um, dang, that is delicious. Uh, let me try that one more time. It's so initial initial impression is the form is much less subtle um, than the. The signatory was it doesn't really like start out fruity it's all just this, like this big explosion of like fruit and like almost like an ashtray but a, the most delicious ashtray you, you could possibly imagine which is probably not that delicious but we're, bear with me for a second oh yeah that's that's totally not what I was expecting. Okay, so yeah, it's just this huge explosion of really apple and pear. A little bit of peach too, but really apple and pear. A little orange peel, but not, not as much. Like just straight up malty fruit exploding in my mouth. But mixed in there is like delicious cigarette and cigar ashes. And I'm really enjoying it. Uh, up front, very peppery as well. Yeah, vanilla, funky oatmeal, just like funky graininess, that beery thing. Um, this is really more like a uh, some kind of lager. I don't even know my I don't know my beers like an amber lager or something. There's a little bit more kind of grungy yeastiness to this. Um, in terms of form, I mean, it's it's this is actually a little bit shorter than the previous glass. It's really all towards the front of my mouth. That being said, I'm, I'm anticipating water will help with that. Otherwise, good mouth presence. And despite not showing up as much on the nose, this one feels like it has more active cask, or at least is showing more cask involvement through the ashiness. Oh, there's some tea notes, like some um, Russian caravan tea kind of stuff happening. Ben Nevis is fun. Ben Nevis is... I've had great Ben Nevises, and I've had Ben Nevises that have been uh, not my favorites. Unbalanced, I guess is the word. Uh, raw. Um, but it's never boring. Like, you're, you're just never pouring yourself a glass of Ben Nevis and, and sort of settling in for a dull time. And that's, that's, that's why we like it, right? Um, this one is starting to bring in some of the coffee elements. Uh, that was ha that were also happening in the Nika. Nose is still pretty congested, but the palate is so it's such an explosion of yum that I I don't mind it all that much. So we're gonna give this give this some water, and we'll come back to it. I'm gonna do like two and a half. Well, I'll start at two and a half. No, we'll do three. Tempted to add more, but I'm going to stop myself. We're going to stop there. All right. Last up in our Ben Nevis lineup is a single malts of Scotland uh, bottling, cast 47.357. Also a Benny's pick, and this is 57.5% alcohol. Uh, also distilled 2012, so it should be pretty similar. 
Ooh. I think this is Peter. Wait, no, I'm wrong. I... Um, I th I was getting Pete for a second there, and now like I'm I'm looking for it, and it's just kind of disappeared on me. There is Pete at Ben Nevis out there. I've only had it once. Uh, I wasn't sure really what to think of it. I know there's something Petey in the background there. I can't tell if this is like a ex Peter cask or if it's. All right, I'm gonna step back. I'm going to step back and reset. Um, try to come to this fresh because I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, we're getting this. This is actually showing a lot of the coffee notes I was talking about before. Really heavy. Like, yeah, like cappuccino on the seaside that you've just dumped some... Uh, not Ardbeg, not Ardbeg this time. This is more like you've done, you put some Port Charlotte in there, so it's a really ashy. It's more ashy ash than peat. Like I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to pick up peat again, and I'm starting to question myself on that. But there's a fair amount of ash on this. Ash, ash, ash. Chocolate orange. Lots of pepper. Um, I do not remember what kind of cast this is. I wouldn't be surprised if it was some kind of crazy sherry or STR thing. No, there's some vanilla in there. I don't know. It's very woody. There's a lot of, like, coffee, um, Assam tea, like, malty tea stuff going on. A little bit of that grungy oatmeal thing, that kind of slightly beery thing it's more like a like a porter now actually yeah it, it, this and the the neek are actually kind of in the same neighborhood this just it's it, it's a little bit more congested but it What's there smells more real, if that makes sense. So okay. let's give this a shot on the palate. Oh no, it's, it is a Peter. <laughs> I wasn't crazy. Okay. These are still the same year. I don't think this is, uh, these are the same batch. This is peated. This is... It doesn't taste like, I mean, if it was in a peated cask, it was in there for a long darn time. This does not taste like a finish. It doesn't taste superficial. It tastes like peat and more so than peat, like an ashiness has really pervaded this entire whiskey. Also fun and very good. Um... Yeah, like intensely ashy orange is my first thought. Yeah, like super ashy. Well, okay, so like, like orange, orange peel, and chocolate orange. All of that kind of wrapped uh, wrap, wrap together with dirt and ash and grungy oatmeal. Um, maybe you put some, some like... Uh, like an old style porter in there as well, like a like a Sam Smith Imperial Stout or something, something really like old school and kind of woody. But it's quite like sweet too. There's a there's a milk chocolatey thing to this, which is very delicious. Um, uh, chocolate milk balls, uh, uh, malt, sorry, malt chocolate ball, whatever. It's been a long day. Uh, ch malted, malted milk balls, those, uh, that are made of chocolate. Um, 
and something something apple-y in this as well, like some some kind of barley appleiness. Yeah, like a little bit of like mashed Granny Smith apple or something in there as well. Kind of playing around with those other elements. Very peppery. Um, really fills up my entire mouth. Great mouth mouth feel. Finish hangs on a long time. That's the advantage of, of peated whiskeys. Like the the, uh, it's not just that additional fun flavor. It's that it kind of helps your whiskey hold on for longer, and the mouth length is also better. So, peat is cheating. It just is, but it works. So. We're gonna add some water and see if the others can catch up to this. Two, three, four, five, because it is like 58% or so. Okay, let's go back through. Completed, that didn't wreck my palate too much, okay. Back to the Nika. <sighs> yeah, you take uh, a chocolate orange and drop it into a latte. That's more or less what you're getting. That hint of art begginess I was getting um, on this neat has really kind of receded. It's, it's just very chocolatey and nutty and coffee stuff now. There's no graininess creeping through, at least that I'm seeing. There's no like raw ethanol. But at the same time, it's it's just it's a hair bit flat. Yeah, it's a hair bit. This is kind of what I was worried was going to happen was that when I added water, it was just going to kind of lose some dimension because blended whiskeys can do that. All right, on the palate. Yeah, it's just it's just kind of it's just kind of losing itself. Ooh. So still has pretty good mouth presence actually. It's um, mouth feels good. Um, mouth length is not so good. Finish is not so good, uh, but for a blend, pretty solid. Um, but yeah, in terms of the flavors, they're starting to fall apart a little bit. It gets more. The coffee note starts to get more ashy and uncomfortable. The coffee and, and nutty notes. Um, it starts to get more peppery in a way I'm not really enjoying so much. Um, a lot of the fruit has just fallen away. There is some ginger coming through now. Ooh. And yeah, that, that thing it was doing before where on the finish, after a second or two, the ethanol kind of kicks out. It's really starting to do that now um, that I've added water. So, um, I mean, if you, if, if you want to ask me why you add water to spirits when you, when you taste them for evaluation, this is why. Like, for this need, it makes a really, really good first impression, especially if you know, you're not just not just getting into spirits because if you just have no idea what you're dealing with when you if someone pours this to you and you're you're you haven't had some time in the in the field. But if you're an intermediate, someone pours this to you, your first impression is, is oh, this is great. I'm really enjoying this. This let's give it whiskey of the year. Um, but you pay you spend some more time with it. As you give it some water, put it under pressure. Dun, 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 dun. Um, and yeah, it starts to show.
it starts to show some, short, some shortcomings. Certainly not terrible. I mean, this is, I'm enjoying this. I, 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 you know, you, you give me the pour of this, I'm certainly not tur tur turning it away. Um, but it's not, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's just not, there, there's issues. So it's a tough one to score because I like, at moments with, you know, tasting this through, I'm thinking like 83, 84, other moments I'm thinking like 81, 82, like it's, so I think we're just going to call this somewhere, we'll call this, we'll call this an 82. We'll, we'll kind of find a place in the middle. 82 points. Um, so it's 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 not good. It 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 still kind of sucks, but it suck leaning up. Put it that way. Um, and that's Nika from the barrel. Um, moving on to our malts. Leave your hate comments below if you really really like this product. But I'm serious. Take. Take some time to really, really think about, to, to pour some of this and really, really think about the flavors, about its behavior in your mouth, especially about how it behaves on the finish. Just, just try it before you, before you post your hate comment. All right, back to the, uh, the signatory. Honestly, of all, of all three of these, this might have my favorite nose. I mean, just the, the attack of like orange and and peach and all the all that goodness from before if anything the the purity of the fruit has kind of turned up a notch and the kind of grungy oatmeal-y thing the grainy thing has kind of receded a little bit and i'm totally okay with that like that's that I am absolutely cool with the tomatony side of Ben Nevis. On the palate. I mean, oh. Definitely young whiskey, and I uh, the mouth length just isn't there. Like it just, it is not going anywhere past the front of my mouth. Um, but it really does have charisma. The the way that that fruit is just pow up front, and then the, the way it just kind of like you know pulls back in order to let all the 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 grainy funky bitterness come through. It's a lot of fun. Really good young whiskey. I mean, that's, that's about all I can say about this. Uh, Score-wise, I'm stuck between an 84 and an 85, so we'll give this an 84 plus. Absolutely worth your attention. Uh, good malt. Let's move on. This is actually by far, now that I kind of equated the, the strengths with water, this um, Duncan Taylor is by far the lightest color of all of these. This is... It looks like a Pinot Grigio. Um, but this was also the one that was showing kind of the most kind of barrel intensity on the on the palette. Well, no, I mean, the, the peated one was also doing that. I don't know, we'll see. On the nose, mm-hmm, it's kind of kicked up a little bit. Okay, so now it was really throwing me a lot of citrusy stuff on those before. Now the orange has come out. It's really a slightly like underripe orange kind of thing, or maybe some like um, even some ber bergamot creeping in there. <sighs> Grainy. 
but also like okay there's some there's some peach there's some stone fruit it's starting to converge on this one although it's still not getting anywhere near the fruit explosion of the signatory on the nose oh, the minerality still there it really hasn't the minerality really hasn't shifted all right on the palate Sometimes it's just all about the mouthfeel and the mouth presence. Um, this is now kind of like starting to tickle my throat a little bit, which I like to see. I like to see improvement in like mouthfeel and mouth presence when I add water. I mean, it's not as much an explosion as it was when it was neat. Um, but the trade-off you get from adding water to this is it, it has a little bit more depth to it in terms of mouth length and mouth feel. But, and it's also just, it's, it's velvety. It's so delicately textured in terms of, it feel, I feel it's like I'm like an ashy, uh, apple is just massaging my mouth and I'm really enjoying it. And you've also got that kind of vanilla creme brulee thing coming through from the cask, even though, like, look at the color on this. I would not have expected, you know, like that, that intensity of, of cast influence, but it's, it's kind of showing up. It's interesting. It's complex. It's got great mouth presence. Um, and it's yummy. Uh, I quite like this. Um, I'm not going to get in the stratosphere with this. I'm going to stay in like 86 territory. Yeah, let's call this an 86. 86 points for the Duncan Taylor. Um, but yeah, it's very crushable, Ben Nevis. And I don't, it's not really a distillery that I think people associate with <laughs> crushability, but it can do it. Uh, it absolutely can. And that's a great example. Crushable Young Whiskey. They are out there. All right, um, and finally, we're going to go back to this Single Malts of Scotland one. Yeah, distilled. These are both distilled 2012, but the character is just completely, is not completely, it's, it's very different between them. Okay, I'm starting to get a little bit of like a Petey Junior Mints thing. Happening. That can happen, actually, with... Um, mainland peters you add water to them and suddenly you start getting a, a junior mints kind of quality yeah peaty ashy junior mints with a halo of coffee nuttiness chocolate in some ways this is what i what i wish the nika smelled like yeah Okay, so put it this way. If you like the Nika and you're angry at me, like, go go seek this out. Or go seek out something like this. This, like, peated 2012 Ben Nevis right here. Go, go seek it out and try it. You will see what I'm talking about. Oh, there's some graininess kind of still there. Actually, actually a little bit more prominent than it was uh, on Neat. Um, okay, on the palette. <laughs> I can't resist that. It's, oh, that's delicious. 
That's absolutely delicious. There's not a ton of depth to that, but yeah, I mean it. It so what what happens when you add water is first of all the sweetness just comes right on, comes right on in, and wants to party. Um, this gets very milk chocolatey. The Junior Mints thing is kind of is kind of there on the palate too. Um, it's got that kind of fudgy barnyard thing that that mainland Peters can do. Um, but emphasis on the fudgy side. And good lord, it's, it's just yummy. I may have to rethink Ben Nevis. So normally when I think of Ben Nevis, I don't think of a necessarily of um, like a crushable malt, a session malt, but these two, these last two are really like crushable, crushable session malts. This is absolutely stonk and delicious. Um, you got that kind of barnyardy, fudgy, ashy mainland Peter thing, plus that little halo of malty fruitiness, peach, apple, and a little bit of that kind of orange character as well, orange peel. Slightly grassy as well. A little minerality. Dang, that's good. Um, I mean, it's still a young whiskey, so the mouth presence is still, is, is really not any better than the, um, the other 2012, but Oh, what do I score this? Hey, let me try the try the last glass one more time. It's the finish. It's the finish where this Peter has the advantage, has all the advantage because it's a Peter. Yeah, this is a fun comparison, actually, because, I mean, this, the Duncan Taylor, has a very, very good finish. It's fruity. It hangs on. There's more going on than just kind of like barrel, you know, barrel tannins and stuff. This has an even better finish where it feels like the peat is just carrying along the entire flavor profile long past you've, you've swallowed. Um, Score-wise, it's a little bit more complex and that finish is just so good. I'm gonna give this 88 points. And yeah, that's the lineup. So <laughs> it really is just kind of an increasing score as we go along, isn't it? Um, the Nika from the barrel. I know this was accused of being the best whiskey in the world history ever. Um, and it's a lovely blended whiskey. And if you don't pay attention too much, you can absolutely have some fun with it. Also don't add water to this. Um, but if you are convinced that this is the best whiskey in the world, I suggest you give it more scrutiny. Uh, all right. And then there's this absolute peach and orange bomb, the signatory, 84 plus. Um, this just absolute wonderfully textured uh, Duncan Taylor at 86. And then um, <laughs> the second... Peated Ben Nevis I've ever had, and the best peated Ben Nevis I've ever had, the single malts of Scotland at 88. And that's all I got. Thank you, Joe, for allowing me to taste these. Um, thanks for watching. Cheers. Keep exploring. Try, try, keep trying new things. Bye.